key word there. I think the, the, the idea was that um, staff were going to contact or get in touch with other municipalities that have such an initiative going just to get a sense of pros, cons, uh, successes and non-successes and so forth to get a bit of a flavor for what the implications are of going in that direction. But yes, you're quite right. The Any activity on it was, was further down the road. Is that, is that clear for everybody then? I have one Q1 2020, if that helps. Actually, that's my It should be Q1 2020. Okay. So the next one is uh, review the town's assets and determine strategies to deal with them in the best interest of the municipality. So there are a number of property matters there that um, some of that will be coming forward on Tuesday and others will be coming forward as we head into, into February. The treasurer uh, is working on, on those reports right now. So, uh, next one is build pride in the, in the community through effective communication and events. And uh, in the first quarter, um, of 2019, um, all those activities are going to are going to take place. So number seven, um, this is a new priority. This is something that uh, um, when we looked at the different priorities that staff had brought forward. Some of them didn't really fit any of the council established priorities. And they recall council had established 10 priorities. So um, this one was generated uh, to kind of capture some of those other other matters that don't really fit other priorities. So this is a this is a new one. It's called build an efficient, well-functioning, customer-oriented organization to deliver on council's priorities. And so these things are all put under this cat under this goal, and it's work with council on the creation of a vision for the community for the next 20 years, which we hope to get to today. The organizational review that we talked about, improve staff morale, um, implement the new agenda management software, implement updates to records management software, um, implement legislative changes, including Bill 68, and those are a number of policies that uh, the clerk is working on uh, along with the planning department and some things that are going to be ongoing is to <coughs> identify efficiencies streamline processes and review policies and focus on customer service and then there's a little bit of a reorg in the clerk's department yeah, just a quick question are those all q1 objectives yes these are all q1 objectives the clerk is nodding, so that's uh, that was her. So moving on to bylaw and, and licensing, um, improve operations. They're looking at the structure and bylaw uh, that would see fewer trained park boards be required. A new pet licensing program, which we heard a little bit about uh, on Tuesday, that's uh, being rolled out. And I think uh, the clerk, uh, did you want to speak to that at all, or? Did the pet licensing program, or have you already covered that? Um, I did circulate um, some more information to council from DocuPet, and um, if there's any additional questions, uh, we were on Speak FM this, this morning to explain it to the public, uh, and newsletters have gone home. Um, but if there are any additional questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay. So moving on then to uh, Treasury. We've got the operating budget approval by council, so that's in Q1, and the four four year and 10 year plans approved by council in year one, or quarter, first quarter. Information technology, uh, undertake a risk management assessment, undertake a cyber security analysis and report to council, managed IT service, county services review, security and support, and database software solutions and needs assessment. So that's all in the first, in the first quarter. So moving on to the second quarter, which is uh, April 1st to June 30th, uh, implement uh, changes to council's governance structure, governance and structure to improve, improve accountability and transparency. And that's uh, some of uh, the committees meet and, and, and that tied in a little bit with the procedural bylaw. Um, so that'll be 
coming together, uh, and then also the review and repeal of uh, redundant bylaws, and that's going to be ongoing. Uh, so the next goal was build a safer and healthier community mindful of the needs of the various neighborhoods in town And this is the areas that fall under general government and uh, Review the businesses business licensing bylaws it pertains to taxi licensing and identify opportunities and constraints uber services standard for drivers for accountability to protect the public and then provide input uh, on the Wasaga Beach Provincial Master Plan and see its completion and adoption of the province. So that's something that carries over into 2020. Uh, but as, as you were advised, uh, the, the draft of the Park Master Plan is going to be released um, in the second quarter. Moving on to uh, the next goal, maintain the financial health of the town while meeting service needs. So in the second quarter, we're going to be reviewing the cybersecurity measures, third-party relationship, and best practices moving forward. Review and update Wasaga Resources, Inc. shareholder direction, including Wasaga distribution member composition and appointment, and review method of reporting to council. So that's going to be done in the second quarter. And then uh, ongoing is retain the ownership of WBI. Uh, next goal is the build relationships and Again, that's the park master plan is the second quarter, and uh, we're hoping that, uh, as I said about the presentation, that uh, Greg Forbes will cover off the Allenwood Beach maintenance and the Fragmites, um, Fragmites and Detritus management. So, uh, review the town's assets and determining a strategy to deal with them in the best interest of the municipality. There's a number of goals here. Uh, one of the key ones is review the agreement um, with the Ontario Parks. And because of the time frame that needs to be done, uh, probably by August, if it's any decision, so that it can be uh, implemented for the 2020 season. Um, the business park, update council, history and ownership status including the hospital location for the business park. Make a decision on the future ownership of the business park. Um, there's a number of property matters there, 550 Rural West, 404 and 414, and update the municipal property index. So those are all second quarter um, initiatives. Um, beachfront property maintenance, and um, this is all second quarter. As uh, we head into spring, and these are a number of items that uh, basic maintenance at the different buildings. And then ongoing is the uh, leasing of uh, vacant units. And then uh, improve beachfront amenities, and uh, that will be done in the, in the second quarter as well. So under the uh, goal of Bill Pride, in the second quarter, communications is going to be uh, uh, undertaking a number of initiatives. You can see them there. Uh, the second quarter is uh, we're looking at the establishment of the council monthly newsletter um, and the uh, establishment of the contact um, email database, constant contact, and um, working on uh, corporate communications, coordinating the messages that are being sent out by the municipality. Again, you'll see the new, the new goal, but these are all items under the second quarter. Improve the town's customer service experience, and that's where we're going to launch that in the second quarter. Uh, revive and renew records management program and continue to improve. Uh, provide corporate-wide records management training and implement council's asset management plan, phases one, two, and three, and undertake financial, financial modeling for major capital purchases. And the second quarter, um, continuing the uh, software and hardware needs assessment, uh, implement the new council chamber streaming system, so we'll be able to stream from the council chamber and work with Rogers on the beachfront Wi-Fi project. So into quarter three, which is uh, over the summertime, uh, July to September 30th, we have a number of uh, uh, a number of items. The key one there is 
uh, dealing with the um, beachfront properties and looking at the method of managing the properties, marketing properties and lease negotiations and reviewing uh, the engagement of a, a commercial <coughs> real estate agent. And um, I'm to scroll up. So this is Q3. And it was felt that basically we needed to keep our current relationships in place for the time being because we're in that leasing mode now for the summer. But once we're into the summer, then we can look at uh, changing those uh, those relationships and look at how we're going to manage uh, how we're going to manage uh, the properties. So that's a Q3 a Q3 initiative, and then uh, the cemetery. Uh, those are Q3 initiatives as well. And then under the build relationships, uh, we up, update the list of properties. By this time, the master plan will be released. Uh, the park master plan will have a new park boundary, and we'll be able to determine those properties that MNR is no longer included as part of the park boundary, and we'll be able to um, start that process in terms of having a conversation about property exchange, property purchase, sale, et cetera, et cetera, with, uh, with the Ontario government. Also in the second quarter, um, exploring digital signage for indoor use in lobbies, or sorry, third quarter at municipal facilities. Third quarter, um, under build efficient well functioning consumer service organization, implement a new uh, website design, install a, a new and replacement CCTV cams, uh, implement server upgrades, and uh, draft and implement policies, uh, standard operating procedures for various IT functions. And then we have a few fourth quarter 2019 items as well. Um, we talked about the backdrop for uh, media interviews, purchasing that in the fourth quarter. Um, improve the municipal picnic area, that's commonly known as Beach Area 2. Uh, maximize parking, blow sand, and um, in the fourth quarter, uh, start a process to look at the office and space <coughs> needs of Town Hall. And then uh, the review of the bylaw software for performance, the MyLisa system. And <coughs> 2020 and beyond, development chart study. Uh, that's something that uh, staff want to bring forward for discussion with council to see if there's uh, some interest in moving that study forward. It will be at its five-year uh, end of life in, in 2020, but um, there's some rationale to uh, consider to move that forward, so we'll be bringing that forward for consideration. Um, re review the provision of graphic design services, um, and then um, 2020 install foot wash stations and public lockers. And then uh, the last item is the website development um, three-year review in 2022. So that concludes uh, general government in terms of the priorities. Mr. Chair, I don't know if you had anything to no, You covered it. Any of the other, any of the other items? Denise, um, Dina, anything else? Your Worship, if I could just go back to the new thought process on pet licensing. Um, and thank you so much for spreading that information. That was really, really... Sorry to interrupt, Mark. Can we try to yell? I can barely hear. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Is that better? I know you can do that. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so getting back to the <laughs> pet licensing. Sorry, I'm yelling. Uh, to the pet licensing. Um, the information that you shared was really, really good. But I'm just wondering... In that uh, document, it said about the agency going out, meeting, consultation of people. I was just wondering whether or not we were looking at putting forth <coughs> prior to doing it, like a public consultation thing, like at the RecPlex or something like that. Was that kind of in the works or? or? We can look at that. Uh, they won't be um, actually going door to door selling dog tags. No, no, not. that's correct. Yeah. That that was very plain within yeah. that document. Yeah. The only thing we would be doing is, is maybe leaving door knockers on, on their, 
their doors. Um, if there's a pet that they think might, might be there, um, that would be the only actual <coughs> contact that they would have, but we can look into it. No, that would be great because uh, I know from my previous experience trying to get information out to the community. Yeah, um, radio is great, but anything we as a town can do to implement that like a, a public meeting just to update whoever can attend, I think that would be a good move. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> here, Frank. Uh, thank you. Just because I was a part of general government, I wondered why the decision uh, to improve the municipal park, so Beach 2 um, was scheduled for Q4 of 2019, so we kind of missed this summer season, and I thought if we were investing in the park, we might see a return if we put more parking in and cleaned it up before the season rather than after. Well, we could, there's limited things that we could do beforehand, but if there's some larger sense, we'll definitely try to do some stuff in the, in the early spring, but once the season gets going, we really don't want to be in there with equipment and heavy uh, machinery doing things because we're going to, you need the high hole and the trucks to get rid of that uh, extra bowl sand. But we'll try to do what we can uh, prior to to try to improve it, uh, but it's going to be limited before we can do the thing. Madam Chair, uh, ask see who wants to who wants to go next. It's uh, community services, public works. Let's or... go with public works. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin? Okay, so I'll go to the Kevin, do you want to work off this or the spreadsheet? Maybe the spreadsheet, if that works a little better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so look at being, you know, Chair, I mean, with, uh, with, with there being different divisions, it would certainly call a, a different format, per se. I know in Public Works, uh, we have a, a multitude of kind of four-year and ten-year plans, and we just simply didn't have enough time to get into them in detail, and we tended to to focus on really the one council priority specific to um, to our uh, group was to build a, a safer, healthier community, mindful of the needs of the various neighborhoods in town. And, and we broke that down into uh, several subsections from roads and drainage, roadway safety and signage, water, wastewater, parks, transit, and engineering. So trying to highlight uh, the different divisions of the department and uh, how that aligns with some of the goals and objectives for and some of the, the priorities for, for staff and, and uh, we had good dialogue uh, through the, the course of the workshop. Um, so in terms of roads, drainage and, and related priorities, we identified kind of a, a little different format than what you've seen before through the spreadsheet. Uh, the focus of public works and some of the pressures in public works over the next term was uh, what seemed to come uh, to the forefront was, certainly for myself, was Parks, transit, and, and drainage, and then the trails is, is another element with, with uh, the parks as well. Uh, but to speak on drainage, we have a number of uh, priorities and, and outstanding work orders that, that we will continue to address. Um, and that's, you'll see a lot of perhaps third quarter and fourth quarters from my department because the first quarter is we're still in the winter. The second quarter, we're still cleaning up from the winter uh, in terms of the <coughs> and the resource allocations from that that continue through to, to June. Uh, so really, a lot of the initiatives that we could perform in the public works happens in the uh, summer months and then into uh, October. So in case you're wondering what we're doing in the first and second quarter, it's uh, still busy with other initiatives. Uh, so drainage was if we've identified as, as kind of the third quarter, and then we have several localized drainage challenges to address. Uh, we've identified uh, more recently that the Ministry of Environment have um, changed focus not only from water and wastewater but onto uh, stormwater management facilities that municipalities have and that includes the oil grit separators and uh, although we do have a policy and, an, and uh, an inspection program both spring and fall and that's why you see Q2 and Q4 uh, there's a longer term financial strategy that needs to be established in terms of how we are going to, um, I guess, better plan for the eventuality of cleaning out these ponds. Uh, typically, their, their lifespan to, 
is 10 to 15 years, and we're approaching that on some of the ponds we've assumed through subdivision growth and development, and, and we need to kind of refine and establish a better policy for financing the cleanouts because they could be quite extensive from, uh, you know, if you now have fish habitat, there's different permits from the NBCA, there could be DFO, uh, you could have materials that need to be disposed of in a, a certain fashion. So uh, some of these ponds, uh, from what we've seen on some of the larger centers to the south, they're upwards of, in some cases, $100,000 to clean those stormwater <coughs> uh, We need to better identify a strategy for that. And I guess you will see, although the font is quite low, um, in order to accommodate that cost and, and really plan for a more sustainable approach to stormwater management, many larger centers are implementing a stormwater utility rate similar to the stormwater rates that we do have. And, and we've identified that as, as a, an item to explore further and bring back through the term of council. Uh, so that is uh, closer to the end of the term. Uh, we'll continue with the preventive and proactive maintenance strategies for our roads need studies and, and recommendations. And uh, the resurfacing, the road and seal is, is typically a, a third quarter uh, deliverable. Um, staffing and you'll see staffing and, and uh, some resource allocations uh, highlighted typically uh, over the course of uh, 2021, 2022, a lot of that is, is influenced by the residential growth and development with not only the East End, with the Gateway W End, but the uh, Sunnydale Trail Secondary Plan. And, and uh, we certainly have uh, some stresses in terms of how we're going to manage uh, the infrastructure for those demands and that growth. Uh, look at control policy update we've identified for this uh, third quarter, uh, hopefully by uh, the summer, August. And uh, our transportation uh, vehicular bridge structural inspections, the OSM inspections will continue every second year with third quarter deliverable. And our uh, uh, transportation updates and roads need studies are updated every five years, and you'll see those uh, are, are due for uh, update in 2022 and 2023. Any questions on that? Is, is that the right format we want to take, Mr. Chair? Uh, I'll leave that up to the rest of the committee. I, I, I'm okay with that because I sat at the table. I just thought one of the pieces that uh, you didn't really highlight there is is our repurposing of, of some lights that we have got from the, uh, uh, we have, uh, from redoing River Road West. And so there are some places in the east end of town uh, when you're going out on River Road East that have dark spots. So the nice thing about you know, I, I'm looking at the repurpose piece and going, well, we've got these lights that were taken down and they're supposed to be installed to cover off some of those dark areas mm -hmm. in, uh, on the River Road East going forward in that event. And again, we have an ongoing uh, street light um, uh, policy. <coughs> but anyway, I just thought that was a piece to put out because it was uh, an interesting <coughs> piece. <in that> <coughs> Staff, of course, for anything that they, we can salvage and reuse somewhere else, it's a good use of resources. So that was my only part on that. Thank you. And that leads into my next uh, section, which identified the streetlight enhancement. So I'll just okay, expand a little bit on that in terms of we've salvaged about, I think, 17 cobra heads from the River West Corridor, and we plan on uh, installing them along kind of the main roads uh, towards River East and, and uh, Cedar Lane. Archer in terms of uh, addressing some of the gaps and complements on the way uh, along that corridor. Uh, and as, as Councillor Foster indicated, we do have a, a street lane request policy and we do maintain a, a budget year over year to address uh, street lane requests and, and that will continue as well. Now I've identified third quarter just <coughs> to be, uh, for those street lane enhancements just simply because uh, it's really dependent on the other distribution's availability. I didn't want to overcommit Paul to uh, first quarter, which when we probably could implement it, but we'll but try and advance those here. as best we can. <laughs> um, back to roadway safety, uh, um, certainly the line painting and pavement marking strategy will continue uh, with, uh, typically our goal is to have uh, the main roads, uh, center lines uh, completed prior to May 2-4 weekend, and, and that usually is subject to uh, when Mother Nature allows us to start cleaning up um, and with the street sweeping. And as well, in terms of uh, safer streets, we have uh, our sidewalk uh, expansion program that aligns with our capital uh, 
pro programs, uh, both design and construction. And you will recall we do have the, the 58th and Ramblewood Drive sidewalk extensions uh, identified for this year, and, and we want to align that because of its proximity to the school. It's we'll align that uh, those works uh, during the summer months when, when the kids are uh, on vacation. Under water wastewater, a lot of the priorities are, are fairly consistent. Um, we do have, as, as we indicated earlier, asset management planning and, and different asset management uh, uh, condition assessments uh, to be undertaken over the coming term. And uh, that, that's highlighted year over year in, in third quarter. Uh, we also have uh, identified the tenure capital plan. And, and there, again, there is an extensive uh, forecast uh, associated with each of our water treatment plants, our reservoirs, our sewage pump stations, our wastewater pollution control plant. We didn't get into that in detail as to provide that uh, for those that are, are interested, but uh, we work with uh, the Ontario Clean Water Agency to address those needs and uh, those maintenance items over the year, and, and uh, they're typically completed prior to the end of the year. Any questions on water, wastewater? In, into the parks, we had lots of, lots of great discussion around the parks. Um, we, we're hoping to advance the, uh, the Parks and Trails Master Plan uh, this, as, as soon as possible with completion by year end. Uh, and as we indicated, that will include uh, some of the, the parks needs analysis and some of the gaps that we have through uh, our, our town and uh, address those needs in the various uh, communities and neighborhoods in town. Uh, part of that strategy is also to uh, perform a more comprehensive uh, uh, playground and, and play structure uh, inventory and, and uh, condition assessment and develop a more comprehensive strategy around that over the long term. Shoreline Trail will continue to be uh, a focus for us in terms of trying to uh, complete that in a manner that, uh, you know, certainly that's one of the jewels in our community from a, a trail standpoint that. Uh, connects with the, the coastal route and, and a lot of the different uh, programs that are out there and, and so uh, we're, we're hoping to continue our dialogue this year uh, with Ontario Parks uh, regarding you know the potential to have that trail network paved from one end to the other and, and we did provide some some uh, improvements more uh, recently in terms of the screening uh, applications there throughout the park but uh, ideally my goal is to have a paved facility from one end to the other. And, and then at the far westerly end of the shore lane, we recognize there are some, uh, there is some attention necessary in the shore lane. Um, and we're hoping if that doesn't align with the development uh, in the area, then, then we'll undertake some improvements to uh, not only widen the trail and start to address some of the, uh, some of the drainage challenges in the interim. <coughs> and that's identified uh, for Q2. Uh, under trails, uh, we do have our, our pedestrian bridge and uh, Wilson inspection and the recommendations that were presented in 2018. So uh, we do have a couple of pedestrian bridges that <coughs> were uh, designed this year and, and some uh, some construction as well. There's some rehabilitation work at the Christopher Avenue Bridge on Trillium Creek and, and we have some improvements to be done on one of the old <laughs> flatbed trailers we also uh, look to uh, advance a strategy to improve the McIntyre Creek Trail over 2020 and 2022 in terms of uh, transitioning that trail from more of a natural trail into a wider, you know, three meter wide trail with limestone screens and, and uh, better connectivity between uh, the bridge structures and, and the road network in the area with the ultimate connection uh, across the street through the, the Sunnyvale Trails. Subject to staffing, we've, we've identified an opportunity to improve some of the trail amenities uh, in terms of uh, locating receptacles, whether it's pet or, or uh, garbage and waste receptacles at, at locations of trail crossings along the road. And we see that as a, an opportunity to improve our, uh, our network throughout the community. Obviously, with those receptacles, you need to have the resources to collect. And uh, certainly in the summertime with pet waste, you need to collect more frequently. So. Uh, that's why I have that disclaimer on that one. It's really subject to, but we have identified a, uh, a 
uh, staffing position this year, we believe through that and leveraging some of the public works uh, individuals we can, we can accommodate them. Um, prior to the end of third quarter, we do have under town beautification uh, revisiting the kind of our, our classification and our maintenance strategy with our, our garden features and, and our uh, horticultural program. And we've also had great discussion around uh, potential uh, potential alternate locations for another community garden within the community. So this year was going to look at uh, alternate sites and, and bring uh, something forward for consideration and then advance that to hopefully in 2020. Uh, again, subject to staffing, uh, there's an opportunity to improve the, the beach access trails throughout the community. Um, with, you know, we have over 50 unopened road allowances that lead to the beach. Many of these are natural pathways or cow paths that have established over the years and, and uh, there's a missed opportunity to uh, really open them up and, and welcome uh, our residents and visitors uh, to the beach from Beach Area 1 through to the west end of town. So uh, there are <coughs> some challenges with that in terms of not so much challenges that we need to work with on here in parks and we need to be like well, how we improve that because there are there is AODA requirements when you when you improve beach access trails and, and the standards you must follow, so we need to be mindful of that. And then we need to maintain them accordingly. Um, under transit, um, yeah, we, uh, just a question with respect to the beach access trails. Um, anything proposed or for consideration in the new Wasaga, Allenwood area? There's some trails that go down to those, down from the streets down to the beachfront as well. I mean, any thoughts? You mentioned Beach Area One and West. I was just wondering. Uh, My apologies. It, it's really all the unopen road allowances that are that serve as access trails right now. Um, and then you're right. There are a couple as you head over on, on Riff Road East um, and Cedar Lane. There are some some lane ways that do lead to the beach as well. Uh, but that that would be all inclusive. It's not really specific to Beach Area One. Uh, just as a follow-up to that, Kevin, I was going to wait till you got finished and then come back. Let's see. Uh, particularly that east end, um, I see that you've uh, identified it as Q1 2020 2021. Uh, I think, particularly the east end, though, I think there's some work that's going to have to happen ahead of that, uh, and it's probably, in my mind, it's probably more of a bylaw issue. Um, because before we can start to do anything with those access points, we have to first of all identify clearly where they are. It's my sense that many of them are either overgrown or have been slowly but surely encroached upon uh, by neighboring properties. And I think there's a, a necessity that that uh, I, I'm assuming, Dina, that it's probably a bylaw thing, that we're gonna have to identify where these things are maybe even get some of them surveyed out to uh, determine the boundaries of them. Uh, it may mean having to remove encroachments. Uh, it may mean um, some significant work before we can actually even reestablish the trails. And so in my mind, that work could begin as early as Q3, Q2, Q3 of, of 2019 in preparation for your departments then being able to do something in terms of making them more uh, amenable to uh, to the public. But uh, A, it, just to summarize, A, identify where they all are, because some of them, you, as you're correct, are road allowances, but my understanding is some of them were also, I'm not quite sure the road I want, uh, an easement um, through properties. So it's probably involving planning and <laughs> everybody to identify where all these are, determine what <coughs> has to be done to get them opened up to the point where in fact you can create a trail. And, uh, and, and certainly I think that's, my sense is that's a greater problem in the east end than it is anywhere else uh, within the uh, within the community. So just my comments. Thank you, Your Worship. And again, I, <coughs> part of public works is, is we're uh, uh, slave, if you will, to the environment. So whether it be snow events or rain events or anything else, we've had a new, newer event that's that's moved its way up from the south over the last few years, and the emerald ash borer beetle. So I don't want to use, uh, you know, plague or pestilence, but there's some biblical term I'm sure for 
these little critters that are eating the trees. And originally, uh, both the Ontario Parks and the town uh, were looking at this and saying, you know, it wasn't here originally, and it's come on with game busters. And that, the, the um, culling of the uh, ash trees, uh, which I was, you know, thought we had kind of one phase and it would be done, is going to be ongoing. It's going to have a significant uh, impact on tree canopy and stuff. So for the benefit of, uh, you know, council staff and the public, um, uh, you know, we have to be aware that this is not only, a, I mean, it's a cost for the town per se, but it's also something that the individuals throughout the town who have ash trees have to be very cognizant of. Because, uh, again, when when it's, it, when it uh, when the tree fails, it's, it's catastrophic and quick. It's not a, a slow process. So I just thought that's a, an area that uh, Public Works is, is going to be involved in, and, and people will see uh, significant cutting and it's 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 going to be in places that will be quite shocking so we have to be aware of that that's that's here and we got to fix the problem thank you councillor watson thank you worship um going on what councillor wells had mentioned about the trails and you said uh I, I agree with everything you can said i think in addition we need those uh, some signage on those when they're finished when they're accessible again because there are dedicated trails all through the Valerie Crescent uh, uh, the drive areas where the trails go through they just been overgrown and the residents out there are not able to enjoy them even though they are sometimes so it's all part of that package. Just yeah just on that so right now the natural trails historically they're left natural they're, these are on open road allowances that we have and we simply don't have the resources but we haven't invested those resources to to improve those um, and from the signage perspective um, you'll know throughout uh, the presentation what we discussed earlier uh, we understand kind of we were waiting in terms of some of the branding exercise that is done or being done and, and where that stands before we start to advance new signs because if, if we're going to develop new signs we may want to integrate some of that branding into the new signs but um, I agree uh, certainly with Council Watson about uh, better signage and wayfinding is is paramount as well, and we can build on that wayfinding uh, document that was presented many years ago, and, and build on that as well. Okay, but I think the message I'm hearing around the table is that um, you'll be looking at trail improvements from Beach One to the West, but I think we want to see some on the East. Yeah, it was that was my mistake. It, did, it really was all encompassing from the east of the town to the west of the town. It includes that one on the side. Okay, definitely. perfect. Thank you. Um, on our transit, we do. Is that it for parks? Chief, you got any comments? I thought you were done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, transit was another big discussion we had in our, our, our in, within our group and. Um, we're going to continue with our uh, kind of collaboration with neighboring municipalities <coughs> and, um, at a staff level we're currently uh, having discussions around what's a better way to provide service um, in a consistent manner you know, throughout uh, our neighboring communities and, and without kind of in parallel type uh, programs and, and so there you will see a report hopefully uh, by summer about uh, potential alternatives to uh, kind of the individualization of our systems versus a kind of a transit collaborative body or almost like a, a regional type South Georgia Bay transit system that is uh, consistent across uh, across the municipalities or, or a variation there. We do have a mobile app, transit app, kind of a, a where is my bus app that is uh, underway and, and we hope to have that implemented by the first quarter. And um, we do have another major goal in terms of making public transit work better for uh, seniors and, and persons with disabilities with the implementation of a, a new uh, accessible and specialized transit system that uh, helps to address the, the gaps and the needs from uh, uh, the AOGA compliance perspective and that's um, accessible vehicles, door-to-door, uh, -door, dial a ride type service for, for those individuals. Currently, uh, that service provided through Red Cross, but there's limitations with that from uh, the hours of service, the, the fare structure in terms of parity with our conventional system, 
<coughs> as well as uh, the resource capacity that they have <coughs> how they're having to turn down different uh, users because of different priorities and limits and limits they have. So we're hoping to explore partnerships and whether that's Red Cross or the County of Simcoe, but to advance a more comprehensive uh, accessible transit system. We also have identified through this term of council, and this aligns more so with uh, residential growth, is, is the, in, the establishment of a third route uh, in the transit in, within our transit network. Uh, and that would uh, satisfy uh, the residential growth in the Round Sandville Trails and, and uh, some of the restructuring that would then accommodate uh, much of the development in the east uh, coming in from River West. And then year over year, we do have, um, we're, we're continuing with our group transit uh, bus stop shelter additions and, and transit facilities. And, and those, although we've identified third quarter, uh, typically it's, it's really the deliverable of the transit shelters is what kind of takes the uh, longest time in terms of uh, when we purchase and uh, several months behind. It, it seemed to have a monopoly in terms of the manufacturer that we use. Uh, Kevin, with respect to the uh, studies, um, root studies, could we, uh, maybe, maybe it's included and it hasn't been mentioned here, but um, look to uh, potentially servicing to as well to the south, um, down through Park Place, around Condit Park Road, back up Veterans Way, so that uh, we're looking to uh, provide a better service in the south area and into and out of the sports park area. Uh, I'd like to see us moving in that direction and uh, perhaps the study period is the time to start looking at how that might integrate. If we're looking at route changes, then uh, it's perhaps time to start thinking of that in terms of how we route change so that we can integrate it easily into the future. Sure. So. I agree. We, we undertook uh, the transit study and operations review. We just uh, we undertook over 2016 and 2017 and uh, identified uh, opportunities. And, and it also identified um, how we would go about accommodating a third route and realigning uh, the timing of our routes such that uh, ideally, we have route one right now is an hour and a half. It's an hour and a half cycle, very convenient, and it doesn't align properly with the, the hour cycle of. Route 2, Clearview, Wasaga Beach, Collingwood Link. Um, so the first priority was to uh, address that issue in terms of uh, maintaining an hour cycle for all three systems, all three routes. Uh, the third route is still challenged with, uh, right now it inter integrates a portion of the New England Village development and extends as far down as hometown. And that is stretching that one hour cycle time uh, to make it back to transfer point is being the, the superstore. Uh, but we can we can have that evaluation done again, but it's we were limited to get service out to hometown uh, with and maintain that schedule uh, for one, one hour, but that's something we'll definitely uh, revisit. Yeah, I, I, I'm fully aware that it's going to require probably even an additional route, but uh, I guess if we're going to service the community, uh, hometowns at one side of that southern Extremity park places at the other side of that southern extremity, and in the middle is, is the sports park. So, to me, if we're evaluating routes, it makes sense to look to how we and when we can uh, incorporate all of that into the system. Anyway, I'll leave it with you for the study. Just one more comment on that, if, if, if we'll do that. But right now, the, the system is convenient. You can get on at Archer and you can get off at the Super Store, you can go all the way to 71st Street. In order to start to stretch to those extremity or those exterior limits, is really just start to introduce more transfer points. And at which point, the convenience of getting on once and getting off, now you're looking at transferring once, maybe twice, to get to your destination. And, and it's finding the balance, and, and we'll, we'll get the end of the floor. Thank you. Well, uh, during the election, certainly knocking on doors down in hometown and Park Place. If you did. Identify the need for a bus service, but I don't think they were looking for seven days a week hourly service. A lot of these people could plan their shopping around a Tuesday or a Friday or whatever day the shuttle was running. I don't think the majority I spoke to were expecting seven days. They're not going to work, they're not going to 
they just find it really difficult to have to book a taxi <coughs> both to and from. And even if they're coming to Walmart, they added $50 to their grocery shopping. So they were just looking for a more economical way to get to, to kind of town and back. But, um, so there might be a, a short-term solution that maybe isn't quite as grand as a fully functioning third group seven days a week. Is that on the same topic? Or yes. Okay. It is. And I'm just saying, building on that too, it's we we heard many a time that you know getting into Barry to the RBH for a medical or whatever it is is a a time time challenge and certainly a cost challenge. And that's where in the second quarter August ish is when the if everything goes plan that Simcoe County their transit is going to start to uh, integrate with our system a bit more. And we'll cover that. We'll cover that part. Yeah. Two comments. <coughs> <on> the first, <coughs> the, the, um, so we've attempted two pilots down to hometown on that premise. The first time wasn't as, as successful as it could have been. And then the second pilot we attempted was based on dialogue with the residents and, and in terms of what days would you like it to come at what time. So we established another pilot to try and advance satisfy that comment in terms of they don't need it all the time, they just need six a lot of times. Uh, and both times, uh, you know, where the projections were 100 people a month, we were seeing, uh, you know, 100 people over the course of the, uh, of the pilot program. I believe it, the projection was 100 a week, and we saw 100 a month or whatever it was, and we didn't extend that, that pilot any further. Uh, but there's different avenues to address, whether it's a flex route where you know, the one route one can go up to Archer on the first pass, and on the second pass go down. Like there's different avenues. It's 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 uh, kind of challenging in terms of planning your day from that perspective. But uh, like I said, this this accessible transit system for seniors that are eligible and persons with disabilities, it will address that need as well. So uh, you can satisfy that at any time, um, and, and then that, uh, that's another. engineering perspective we have a couple of policy updates uh, both the road occupation policy I believe was first uh, update <coughs> in 2019 update coming first quarter uh, we want to explore uh, potentially the complete streets policy for for the community in, in alignment with the official plan and uh, the results of that would, would uh, be uh, considered through the engineering standards update as well and that's more uh, really designing or planning, designing and, and operating, maintaining our roads in, uh, in a manner such that it, it accommodates all mobile transportation, not vehicular driven days, but pedestrian, cyclists, traffic, or vehicles and transit, and, and looking at uh, better ways of uh, moving uh, people through the community safely, and that's from ages 8 to 80. <coughs> and then uh, also there was uh, some, some good discussion around potential implementation of a master drainage plan. This will come back again, but we've, we've recommended uh, consideration of events uh, in the second quarter of 2020 and like be a two-year program, but it's really looking at, we certainly have gaps within our, our drainage network through the community, and, and um, we've got a multitude of, of drainage plans which identify uh, catchment areas and different outlets, but they're, when you get to the east and, and certainly north, even in some cases, River, uh, we need to define where our future outlets are going to be so we can start to uh, plan for how we introduce uh, not necessarily just simply storm sewer systems, but uh, that's one element, but also you know, in, low impact designs or other alternative uh, drainage features. That, uh, we need to start to work a little more long term from a drainage perspective. Uh, and that generally highlights uh, some of the priorities. Like I said, there's a lot of different forecasts. In the Plans and you know, that's still part of this. It's possible. Okay, thank you, Councillor Watson. Thank you, Richard. Um, I want to thank Kevin for that uh, presentation and Councillor Foster, chair of the committee. And we had a member of the public at our table also. She's, she's here today and she provided some, some input for us also. Um, it works in a very complex portfolio, and I believe it's in excess of 50% of the overall 
town budget. I don't know the exact proportion, but it's it's, it's large. Just guess that it's half the pie. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, kind of very detailed and an interesting going forward. I did see a, a great level of enthusiasm from Kevin that the Parks Department is uh, now under the wing of Public Works. Um, sometimes you think people just think it's cutting grass, but there's a lot more for the parks. There's, there's a lot to be done, so I'm excited about it. Uh, and taking that over also. And uh, the transit piece of it in 2008, uh, with a few of the current council to go to faith uh, for that kind of system and saw the beach is growing like crazy and very successful and one more building block for a complete planning. So I'm just a final comment on the special project that we're Included in the minutes from today's meeting for public review. We also had, and Kevin likes maps, we've got multiple beautiful colored maps on water and the sewer and uh, road reconstruction and all that. <coughs> I'm not sure whether your plan was to include those as well, the, the diagrams, but I'd like to have suggest that they be added as an addendum so that people can see, you know, this is. This is our, you know, kind of the Q1 through 2022 thing, but as well those 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 larger diagrams, or at least the link to the larger diagram. So if someone wants to know, because there is a, a, a there has to be a schedule for, you know, road reconstruction, bridge maintenance, things like that that are followed. And, and so even though it's not part of this sitting here today, we refer to it an awful lot. So I'd like to see if those can be added on. Are those, are those already on the website? They are. But I mean, as part of this presentation. Yeah. So we do have, we update our tenure every year. It's a rolling tenure, and we try and keep it as current as we can. And under the, uh, the engineering page of the Public Works site, uh, there is the tenure for uh, roads, drainage, and water wastewater. Uh, we're looking through the following master plan to establish one specific for the parks. Also have the roads need study, which is the one we looked at in terms of defining kind of the priorities, which roads were deficient, which one needed uh, resurfacing, rehabilitation, or reconstruction. And so we did, we did look at just a this, yeah, just so that at the bottom it could link to that. Address. Sorry, but I do want it when people are looking, they, they can dig down without having to go through just a little bit. Anybody else? Uh, thank you. Just if I could add one thing to Q1 to uh, Kevin's workload. Um, I'd like to see an update to the ATV bylaw. So I know back in 2016, we introduced a bylaw to allow ATVs to travel the roads to allow um, visitors to town and to encourage residents in town to get on their ATVs <coughs> and take them to the trails instead of have to um, put them onto trailers, take them to the gas station to get gas, put them back on the trailer to take them to the trail. So we've been working with this bylaw for the last few years. I haven't heard of any problems. I think the, I know you have done some research. I've certainly heard from the ATV club that their request is that we take the time of year restriction so that as of the end of October, they don't have to park their ATV in the drive. They can put the plow in the front of it and continue to use it. Um, or when the weather is as mild as it is from this winter, they can actually take that ATV to the trail and continue to enjoy the sport. So I think it's a fairly easy request, um, which is why I'm suggesting it goes into Q1, so that we could look at updating that bylaw and to look at the time of year. Thank you. Thank you.
haven't had extensive damage that I've been made that uh, you know, the DPs have, have uh, influenced our, our maintenance efforts or in, in any negative fashion. Um, I think I see the biggest challenge, and it's more of a discussion, I think, is right now there are no trails per se within Wasabi Beach. It's really strictly limited to the shoulder of the roads with the municipal road allowances. I think the conflict that may be introduced by extending it through the winter is really between the Somerville Club and the Community Club and, and Ontario Parks because that's where they may want to deviate onto that Somerville Trail that's been designated through the Parks Network. But uh, that would be part of that discussion. We haven't had any. to community services, that was Pam, Chris, and the Chief. We will be presenting this one. Are you all contributing? We didn't really discuss that. Chris, probably, well, do you want to just take each of our sections? Yeah. Pam, you're ready to jump in in the library areas? Okay. Your first look, Pam. <laughs> Your first look. <laughs> <laughs> Were you not ready? <laughs> I think it's been built in a way that we can differentiate the various departments. Uh, okay, so further to this uh, first priority identified for community services, uh, definitely healthy community uh, um, encompasses many of the recreation programs and they won't all necessarily uh, apply just to this age friendly, sometimes known as seniors, to reiterate uh, what Pam has already told the group. Uh, uh, so we have uh, identified many of the recreation uh, staff priorities under this healthy uh, bullet. Uh, uh, perhaps rather than going through every single bullet as I uh, had done uh, last week, uh, I could speak to the phasing. Uh, we definitely did have discussion uh, between Councillor Kinney, Councillor Boulanger and the rest of the group at our table about staff's uh, ability to understand that phasing uh, um, the workload uh, across uh, the next couple of years is uh, realistic and uh, uh, you can see on each bullet that I've tried to spread the phasing in the recreation uh, area. Similar uh, youth recreation uh, and the youth center. Uh, obviously these programming uh, ideas are uh, built around constant improvement in our provision of service. Uh, specific, I believe, to the uh, council objective uh, with uh, uh, age-friendly ideas. 
We have uh, five bullets under the Seniors Active Living Centre. That's where the bulk of the uh, older adult programming happens. Uh, that is town-led. Uh, we need to keep in mind all the many community groups that we also work with. Uh, I believe there are 60 that we have on our list uh, that the Recreation Department currently uh, interacts with, uh, if nothing else, by posting their uh, contact information in our user guide, etc. So beyond that, uh, um, I, I would say that uh, uh, volunteer support and coordination is the last section and uh, similarly it works in tandem with the other recreation ideas on building healthy community. It seems my bullets continue here and uh, we have uh, two ideas, uh, three ideas uh, under the facility uh, section. Um, an interesting one, uh, uh, 2022, consider East End uh, establishment of Seniors Active Living Centre as well. So far we've maybe booked some programming. Uh, I, I would say the Woodworkers Club, the Quilting Club uh, are maybe two key ones at the arena, but uh, perhaps the establishment of a permanent uh, space uh, in daytime hours. Uh, and that one did come out for uh, 2022, and I, obviously uh, it would uh, make sense to have it follow the uh, uh, future arena project. And uh, uh, we, we also uh, discussed uh, the timing of the recreation master plan, and that it would probably be more relevant uh, in a year or, or two years' time once we were uh, concrete on our plan for uh, uh, the arena uh, building. So phasing uh, also uh, sort of spread across the term for the customer service. Uh, we start to see the establishment of some term ongoing, and we did discuss that, that a lot of these objectives won't actually start and stop, but in fact are uh, um, sort of quality measures that uh, staff had put forward to keep up with. Uh, under this healthy, uh, um, uh, community uh, objective uh, or priority from council. Uh, the second bullet was implement uh, enhanced water safety program. And there was a bit of discussion, uh, mostly revolving around preparation for this coming summer. Uh, there is money in the current budget and it seems uh, uh, the ideas put forward uh, are all realistic uh, and should be discussed in the council in the coming months. So we are ready for the summer of 2019. Uh, some specifics there would be uh, to further distribute uh, our water safety brochure that was initiated in 2018 um, and, and to build in some inspection uh, um, ideas between uh, fire uh, with local businesses uh, and accommodations as well as perhaps bylaw and their licensing process to ensure that uh, as many businesses are possi as possible are uh, uh, helping us send out this message uh, for water safety uh, key bullets. Um, signage along uh, the river mouth areas uh, was a, another concern that staff should address uh, as well as uh, promoting uh, the exact uh, explanation as to what the red flag at the river mouth is uh, trying to teach uh, especially visitors who don't know the dangers at the river mouth. Uh, uh, the idea of trying to uh, m ensure that there was a public access defibrillator at the main end where we see large crowds uh, and discussion uh, around how we might be able to do that uh, in a safe way, uh, as well as working on the uh, waterfront messaging at the various main end stations and perhaps expanding on that by adding uh, uh, the uh, water safety brochure. Uh, there's ice information on that brochure as well, so it would be relevant at this time of year, too. Okay, uh, moving forward, uh, bullet number three under that healthy community was uh, uh, surrounding a community kitchen, and the idea was to uh, bring a uh, report forward to council by the end of 2019 in order to uh, consider whether the, uh, the specific aspects of a community kitchen could be incorporated in the new arena uh, project or perhaps in another town owned facility otherwise. Uh, and there's a library piece there under the uh, community kitchen as well, so I'll look to uh, Pam. I just uh, put in that uh, if the community kitchen is a priority for council, and then uh, it's certainly one the library is open to uh, the community kitchen as a part of the new library building. It's also an opportunity if perhaps it's deemed that uh, an addition could be passed on to the back of the current library, it would be an idea just to do additional programming. <coughs> oh, 
thank you. So no, um, no criticism, just a question that in both the library and the recreation events and facilities, they're both working towards cultural programming for seniors. And I'm just wondering if rather than um, duplicating or, or competing for services that we somehow as a town think where our senior services are best placed or I don't know, I just think as council there should be a bigger discussion sometime in the future about the, uh, the senior services. And I think there was some discussion at the table about Kristen, I have been talking as well with my team about uh, services. We're taking some of the library services into the Senior Science Learning Center, but I think the main gist of the, the conversation is that we're not duplicating services. We're providing different services, uh, real learning back through the library, and some cultural uh, focus, whereas they have a, a greater focus on activities and uh, being active for the seniors. So we're trying to not create duplication there. similar, I'm saying complementary services, but I also think we have to we have to look beyond the, uh, the corporation itself <coughs> and say, for example, the YMCA or the Community Health Center offers a variety of programs that, that, can, that can integrate and, and complement services that we have. And uh, to, as, as the Deputy Mayor said, I, I just, you know, it's, it's best use of everyone's resources if we're not mirroring each other and everyone's spending money and time on the same thing that we find out a way to you know that's that's best but we look not just around the table here but say where are our community partners I think Chris identified 60 associated you know clubs and organizations and and they have a wealth of programs and, and requirements but also things they can do and, and I think the town has facilities and the ability to 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 help integrate some of that so so again we're not spending the same trying to spend the same dollar twelve. Okay. Um, I have my staff who do programs right now doing an environmental scan of community map looking at the different programs and services offered to their age genres right now and I will be getting a report from them at the end of the month. So we are looking at what else is offered in the community to avoid that sort of situation or to partner. We find that very terrific for a lot of the community organizations for introducing the community to their services and then pushing these people into their programming. So we're, we're certainly cognizant and we're trying to open up those communication channels to avoid that sort of situation. And that, that was never Construed as a negative com no, no. comment. It's insane. I understand. Go we're, crazy. We're looking it's into good. It. No. Okay. Chris, do you have more on the report? Yes, I, I guess uh, uh, it's self-explanatory that the uh, expanded trails and bike lanes uh, goes back over to uh, Public Works. Uh, uh, that was a fourth bullet under the healthy community. Uh, and then moving to protecting lives and property, a fifth bullet, and I think the majority of that was fire department. Uh, just to Chris, uh, and again, I think this is something that can be done very sh quickly with, uh, with the support of uh, MNRF, of course, because it's their land. But um, I agree with you, the red flag, a lot of people don't understand what that means. Uh, it is a high risk area from, let me say, the uh, MNRF boat ramp out to the point and probably the same distance back in on the beachfront area to the undertow. Uh, as a person who boats uh, quite a bit up and down the river and out into the bay, the number of people you see swimming in that area, um, you cannot protect people from themselves. That's an impossibility. However, I think uh, you did put up, uh, have a billboard. Um, now, whether you intended it to be singular or not, I'm, I'm not sure, but in the singular, 
I would personally like to see us working with MNRF to see if we can get their, their involvement or at least their willingness to allow it to happen. Starting at the boat ramp, going about every hundred yards along the edge of the river out to the point and then about every hundred yards coming back along the beachfront um, from the point, uh, very large, you know, four foot, four by four, four by six billboards indicating the danger of swimming in that area uh, due to currents and undertow. Um, and, uh, and as I said, you cannot protect people from themselves, but at least we can say that they have been well notified that there is in fact a significant danger. I think Chris, you'll take that under consideration looking at your enhancement uh, water safety program. Definitely, uh, I guess over to the chief for the uh, fire and emergency services portion. Okay. And just when we're talking about the water safety, obviously we're working very closely with, uh, with Chris on that. Um, so just on ours, I'll go through really quick. The first four bullets, um, they're basically uh, items that have been done, but they're always they're always ongoing. I'm not going to impact uh, any kind of budget or anything. Next page, maintaining the fleet. I'm going to jump down to that <coughs> in a minute. Um, maintaining the equipment to meet industry standards. Same thing, I talked about that in the presentation last week. Uh, our training facility will be completed at the end of this year. So. On to establish and fill a position of fire prevention officer. We're looking at Q1 of 2020. The next bullet, renovate and modernize fire station two. That's gonna take some time, so we, we'd like to start the planning process in 2020. It'll be most likely a good year-long process, and then uh, look at the starting the renovation in Q2 of 2021. Having that complete before the winter season, so it'll be an aggressive uh, um, renovation. But uh, if we're well planned, we can do it in that, that period of time. And then that other item about planning a third station, Sunnydale, uh, that's not applicable as of now as far as the planning of the station. But working with our planning department and our engineers, we are discussing about uh, making sure that property um, within that development is definitely allocated for a, for a fire station. Fire EMS, no, I'll, I'll say that it's both. So maintaining the fleet, um, there's look, we're looking at replacements. If you go down further, you'll see replacement of the rescue uh, will, will hopefully take place this year, this year's budget, and then a pumper in 2020, another pumper in 2021, and an aerial in 2022. Unfortunately, over the years and, and many councils, um, there's been some, let's push this truck, let's push this truck, and now we have created what I referred to way back then as a log jam, and that's what we're dealing with. So, um, as I had said in my presentation, we're, we're looking at some alternatives to, to run a frontline medical unit, maybe take some wear and tear off our pumpers and stretch them a little longer, but this is the position that, uh, that we find ourselves in. Yes, uh, just uh, more specifically uh, to that, uh, I think the, the chief indicated on the 2002 and 2004 pumper that if we uh, used uh, smaller vehicles for medical that <coughs> they could be pushed out maybe as for another three or, or plus years, which would be an advantage. But when, when we look at the plans for a third station and the growth of the town, uh, one of the things we discussed in our group was uh, looking at uh, almost like a reserve or a um, minimum allocation on an annual basis because these are very large expenditures and whenever it comes to council because of, it represents often a percentage and a half of the budget that maybe we should be putting in an allocated amount every year whether you're buying a truck or not you know, 200,000 or a quarter million, so that when we actually come to the point where we have to buy a truck, the decisions are a little easier. So I, I think the chief referred to it as possibly a, you know, a, a reserve, but uh, it could be a consideration because you, you now look at the kind of costs we're looking at over the next four years, it, it, it will be challenging. So. Okay, 
Okay. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, we did spend quite a bit of time uh, uh, at the beginning of last week on the Tuesday meeting discussing the arena <coughs> and then subsequently the library. Um, uh, we are uh, in motion to, to bring recommendations forward in Q1 uh, for the arena project. Uh, I have uh, identified uh, facility discussions on other uh, uh, further needs uh, that may be identified uh, through the recreation master plan in Q3. Uh, as well, uh, discussions are ongoing with the uh, development of a, a third elementary school with the public school board that the municipality may be able to partner for a gymnasium. We don't have a full-time high school gymnasium in town yet. Uh, then we move back uh, to uh, Pam with some library uh, bullets. Um, obviously, developing and working towards a new library is a priority for the library as well as council. Uh, we're predicting that we can get underway with some site assessments in uh, Q1 of this year. services in the community and, and uh, we're already working on that with the rec department by uh, offering library services on Thursdays through the Active Living Center. Uh, we're also looking this year into launching some larger signature events at the library, so that's 2019 as well. Uh, improving our communications, we're, we're going to uh, boost up our marketing this year and then next year look at potentially a whole new branding initiative. Our 
Okay, so uh, this was the uh, third uh, council priority that was addressed through our community service discussions. Uh, a specific one was uh, looking out to uh, concerts as soon as possible if we could do some sort of a bulk purchase slash plan with uh, an RFP to uh, various promoter groups so that we could uh, secure artists for perhaps a year at a time using one block of money uh, to, taken out of some of our key uh, event times. Uh, as listed here, uh, Family Day, Victor uh, Snowman Mania, many people know of it as uh, Victoria Day, something new. Uh, in fact, it's something on our agenda later on today. Uh, Canada Day and Labor Day, uh, and I, I did scribble in my notes here Thanksgiving, and it is another one that we're working towards. This Hoot Nanny event was year one last year, but uh, another event that we could perhaps bulk in uh, some uh, more quality entertainment if we do a competitive process. Um, beyond that, uh, there were uh, specifics. Uh, we didn't do a lot of discussion on this uh, winter events, uh, uh, winter market uh, uh, and ski trails or summer festival uh, or more family focused events, although I do think that that is work that happens in the special events department and uh, will not be forgotten that the pricing or the, 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 the timing has not been phased into uh, this plan of priorities yet. Um, you, you'll see that I noted a number of the uh, priorities in the special events department. Now we're moving into the ones that the staff provided are ongoing uh, and uh, Moving on to the second half of the page, there is some timing uh, phased in uh, for a, a number of our uh, special event department <coughs> initiatives. Uh, one specific one that has come up a number of times in comments with the uh, councillors here in the past two weeks, and it is definitely part of our uh, current work plan, is to develop an annual marketing plan. And I know that this is also an initiative for town-wide, but uh, special <coughs> events specifically, we are going to look at all the small uh, um, expense lines that we have uh, for the various uh, uh, events uh, and uh, build out a plan so that we can streamline uh, contracts with uh, newspapers, uh, radio stations, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's one that I would, I guess, pencil in uh, uh, to be uh, prepared by Q2 2019. And uh, last but not least, there is a customer service uh, department initiative under special events, and that's to uh, uh, expand our receivables back into that centralized office. Uh, thank you. The one thing, the uh, winter events, winter market, or a ski trail, we kind of ski, skate, whatever, some kind of a trail. I know we talked about it as a priority of the last term of council, or certainly as an idea. Since then, other communities have developed and opened their, their skating trails. Uh, Simcoe County uh, has actually opened one. And I'm just wondering, rather than have it as a, an event with no plan to move forward, can we put some timing or can we assign it to a department so that we can actually get some data back on skating carol, you know, would be $2 million, so it's not feasible, or maybe it is something we could do in the next couple of years if we started to plan now. And I'm not sure if it belongs here or it belongs in public works and parks and facilities or beachfront, but I just would like to see something more than um, a line in this priority. Chris, do you have any comments on that? Uh, this is certainly, Your Worship, uh, uh, Director of Public Works and I have discussed this uh, a little bit. There have been discussions in our community service work group this week, in fact, and uh, definitely amongst staff as well. Uh, is that in addition to ski trails, or are we uh, perhaps regarding Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Bray's comment uh, talking about skating trail as a council priority? It says ski trail in the notes. Uh, it does, and I know I've often talked about a skating trail. I think the ski trail is, exists already through MNRF, where there is no skating trail. We have an outdoor rink, which is great. Um, you know, can we run the Zamboni through the forest <coughs> attached? Is there something we can do to enhance our outdoor winter activities? So since it's a, a trail, I'll look over at Kevin and just to see, and we don't have the answers today, obviously, but maybe that's something that we can back um, to Public Works Committee here appropriate committee rather than jump on something today and say one way or another because I think it is something that comes with cost and expense and it, it is 
something it's, that here doesn't right. really have ownership. Like, if there's right. no Q1, 2, 3, 4, four years from now, I just like to see somebody go back and do some investigation. Do we have land? Do we have equipment? Is it a realistic goal, or do we stop talking about it? Kevin? Certainly location is critical for, for the success of that location. Ideally, if you could integrate it around the you know, woods property, ideally through the trail, through the forest would be great. That's Ontario Parks property, and the likelihood of that is we can have those discussions. But you know, defining where it would work is, is critical. But uh, again, it comes back for us. It's <coughs> staffing, that. staffing that is, is our biggest challenge. But we can look at options and bring something forward. Okay. Next is Councillor Kinney. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, to Deputy Mayor Bray's comment. I think it's something that the town and other communities have embraced, and it's something that if staff can come back with some sort of, well, we're looking at these locations maybe, it's going to cost this much money, uh, we have to have a narrow Zamboni to get through the woods and stuff like that. Uh, if we could have something like that brought forward, at least then we could look at the possibility of a future development. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Watson. Thank you, Worship. Um, I mean, this comes back. I've had many comments from uh, seasonal residents here and just people in Nova Saga Beach and, and, and for the sake of the can't believe that we have not become a world class um, facility for cross country skiing, snowshoeing, trail with the parklands that we have here in the ministry and then it comes back again in the ministry to cross market with us, enhance our marketing and participate in these initiatives. That's, you know, we have the beach and we have these beautiful parklands and um, we do not have a willing partner to, to work with us on these types of things. That's perfect. As Kevin said, behind the Oakview at Feminine Ironlands, whether it's with cross country ski trails, snowshoe trails, it's all there. We need that our biggest landowner to come to the table and give us some dollars more for And I'll look to George to add that maybe to the list to have discussions at the end of the month and we meet with them. Councilor Wells. Yeah, uh, thank you, Worship. I have a couple of things I want to use in response to uh, Councilor Watson. Um, I can't speak for the, for the last term, but I know in previous terms we had numerous attempts at discussion with MNRF for them to come to a realization, um, they didn't, but we kept trying, uh, that uh, we are not your usual provincial park in an environmental sense. The provincial park here was created uh, in the 70s to be the playground of Ontario, for want of a better phrase, the tourism capital of Ontario. Unfortunately, I don't think MNRF ever accepted that this is a different animal here, that this is a tourist-based provincial park and not an environmental protection. And I'm not against environmental protection. Don't, Ian, don't say I ever said anything against environmental protection. <laughs> 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 but but it, it, we have a huge tourist component here, and unfortunately, the MNRF park guidelines, in my mind, don't interlace with the, the circumstances that we have here. And I think we have to really continue uh, pressing hard on that particular issue, that we need a different set of rules and guidelines for this provincial park than what's applied to many of the other provincial parks around the province. So, George, you've sat at a table I have over the years trying to make that point, and I guess we just have to keep pumping until we find a willing listener. Well, and just um, when, when George and I met with um, Brent Forbes, that's his mindset is that he's he's been trying to say that as well we are different here so i think we have a good partner locally to um, assist with that message yeah, and we just have to make sure that we can get that message going from him up before they <coughs> slap him for having the wrong opinion and yeah. <laughs> well we'll see them at the end of the month so yeah. we'll make sure uh, if i may wish a couple other yeah. quick things um mm -hmm. chief and i were just talking uh, to Sylvia Bray, to deputy mayor bray's point the idea of creating a skate trail is a great one, uh, and there is a short-term um, reasonable fix to that. If you look at Arnell Park, which is off Pauline and Knox Road East, there is the sunken soccer pitch, 
now it largely right in the winter time it's used as tobogganing hill off of um, off of uh, Wasega Sands Drive. But it wouldn't be, in my mind, too great a difficulty to be flooding. I don't think you can flood the entire track, lower track, because you're going to be too close to the to the bottom of what's the tobogganing hill. But <coughs> there's a trail that could come halfway across the park using the far side and come halfway across the park, flood it, turn it to a skate trail. Uh, it's a short-term solution, perhaps. But when you look at the number of families that go to that park to uh, toboggan on that little small hill, um, adding a skate trail to that, uh, in my mind, makes a lot of sense. And um, you know, thanks to the chief for you know, pointing it out to me as a possibility. Um, well, and he lives right close by, so he'll look after it for us. I was thinking yeah. instead of taking his pickup home at night, he can take the pumper and just flood it. And my last point would be actually to uh, Director Roos. Um, with respect to the arena planning, and, and I'm comfortable for the most part, you know, what do I know about architecture? Nothing, but I'm comfortable for the most part, but with the concept plan, I think there's some areas for adjustment that was presented to us earlier. But as we're looking at, quote, the options, as Chris has been directed to do, both for planning as well as locations and so forth, I, I think it's critical that we look to locations that are going to allow for future additions, expansions, compatible facilities, and so forth to go along with it. So that it becomes more than an arena, but it becomes a sports complex. And the, um, the design, you, Chris, mentioned the need for a gymnasium facility and looking towards the elementary school build or a secondary school build in a partnership, which is all makes perfect sense. But if we could look, as we are looking at this arena planning, to incorporate a full-size gymnasium into that planning, now cost-wise that may not be feasible in phase one or in the first stage, but I know from past experience uh, with, the, with the development of schools, you can architect, is that a word? You can architect uh, expansion into the original design so that at a time if you can't do it right away but if you have this vision that down the road this is more than an arena this is a sports complex and you architect it in such a way that you have a plan for somewhere down the road a future addition of a large gymnasium complex or even something else so it's architecting it in the first place but it's also locating it in such a place that you have the feasibility and the opportunity to do that when the time comes so I, I think those are components that need to be added into this review other than just the cost and the location alone. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just further to some of the comments that were already made into our CEO with, uh, in conversation with the m &R. there's many entry points into the park and uh, there's a, a fair bit of trail network uh, without connectivity and to say that uh, if you're if you're out in the park and and a park warden comes by and your a snowshoer is on the snowmobile trail, they don't like that particularly much. However, there's a lot of trails that you have no way of getting to unless you traverse a portion of a snowmobile trail. And I think uh, some of it is fairly easy fix, but uh, I think they have mapping for all of that. But it might be something to look at because as you go in there there's cross-country skiing there's snowshoeing there's hiking and snowmobiling and uh, again depending on what we do with ATV uh, certainly an ATV uh, is, uh, causes havoc to a snowmobile trail so they, they would have to probably have uh, independent uh, trail if it was going to be used okay thank you Councilor Watson Just, uh, thank you. The comment it stands idea. By doing that, this is the new word architecture. Um, you know, we are there, shovel ready to go forward when funding becomes available. So I think that's a very good idea. So other people, plans are there. So when it becomes available, we're there. Okay. Okay, I think we'll take a quick 10 minute break.